תחזרו ותתיישבו, אני מקווה שהיה לכם מאוד מעניין, נכנסנו ככה להרצאות וראינו שבכל אחד הייתה אווירה קצת אחרת, אבל בסוף כולם היו מרוצקים. אז אני שמחה שוב בפעם השנייה בקטע הזה להזמין על הבמה את הראפר טונה. היי שוב, אני, אני ראפר טונה, מקודם שרנו שיר קצת קשה, המילים שלו היו קצת uh, כואבות, אז אנחנו נקליל את האווירה רגע עם שיר על התקפי חרדה. <laughs> ואם אפשר לבקש מכל המורים לשמור על שקט, <laughs> כי... יש לי בעיות ריכוז באמת, זה, זה פשוט, זה, זה, זה כל מה זה. חוץ מזה שאתה תפסיד הופעה נחמדה, איך זה עייף. נראה אחרת, קול קורא מהר אולי, מתקן אחד יותר מדי, אני לא עונה בקול אבל, אני רוצה לרדת, לא יותר מדי מה להפסיד, יותר מדי מלאכזר, המון המון אי ודאות, אם זאתי שאני אוהב, אני לא יודע איך בוכים, או מה בכלל הולך בפנים, יותר מדי דברים צפים, בדיוק בזמן הלא מתאים, אז נבהלתי וקיבלתי שכר חורף, לא הבנתי מה איתי, מה כואב ולמה אני במקום והכל מסתובב אצל הטלפון, שיחפשו אותי מחר, חלאס עם הטלפון, קוסם וכמה נסגר. בוא אלינו למסך, בוא תהיה כוכב מוצלח, מנחה יפה, חיוך מושלם, ילדים נופלים בפח, ויש לי חום ואין לי חום, הלב שלי דופק על מאה, סליחה, אני לא איתך היום, בדיוק עסוק בלהשתגע, משהו כואב עכשיו, אל תבדוק באינטרנט. עשה טובה ולך תשכב, או הלכת כבר לאינטרנט. אז נבהלתי וקיבלתי, שכר חורף, לא הבנתי, מה איתי, מה כואב, ולמה אני במקום, והכל מסתובב. ים סרטים רעים פחדים אשמה ביקורת כבר חודשיים עם אותה תספורת עם אותם בגדים ועם אותה סחרחורת כל היום בדיקות החלפתי שני רופאים לפעמים רופאים הם רק סוחרי סמים שמתכחשים למה שרץ לך בפנים מטפלים בלב שלך באספירין והפחדים בפנים חיים עוד לא פסחו על חלק כשהם יוצאים זה כמו כדור של שלג פה קבור הכלב פה טמון הדלק טענו לילד שבפנים הם מלא אין לך לאן לברוח גבר גם אני חשבתי שאני בסדר שהחיים שינו בבום את התדר וראיתי שבדיוק כמו רוב העדר שנים בלעתי חדשות בשעות שנים הייתי מתעלם מרגשות המון שנים פחדתי לעשות בושות איך לא אפול בכלל לחרדות קשות אם אני את עצמי לא אוהב ועד שגם זה יעבור שהכל יסתכל 
עכשיו לנושא המרכזי, סתם. תודה רבה לדיון. טוב, זה אחד מהסיפורים הכי מעוררי השראה שיש, אולי אפילו בעולם. לרוי בנקר היה את הכל, כסף, מעמד, שיחק סקוואט, ידע מה הוא יעשה בחיים, ההורים שלו ידעו מה הוא יעשה בחיים. אבל הסקרנות הובילה אותו לכפרים הקטנים ביותר, לכפרים העניים של הודו. המפגש הזה שינה את חייו, אבל לא רק את החיים שלו, אלא גם את שלנו, את של העולם כולו, של אלפי ילדים בכל מיני מדינות. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Bunker Roy, founder of Barefoot College. He was selected as one of time 100 most influenced personalities, Roy Bunker, שביקש שגם נגיד בעברית, שתוכלו לשאול שאלות בסוף ההרצאה, הוא ישמח אם תשאלו. רוי. Let me share with you the story of the only college in the world which has been designed by the poor, managed by the poor, and owned by the poor. And this story started 44 years ago, no, 50 years ago. I went to what in India is called the most snobbish, elitist, expensive education in India. The school and college I went to has produced prime ministers, billionaires, politicians, and I was also blessed at that time in 1965 to be the Indian national squash champion. So all the jobs were easy to come by and there was no problem looking for work or what my mother called a good job at that time. But in 1965, there was a famine in Bihar, in a state in Bihar in India, and a very old Gandhian leader asked us as young people to go and help out in the famine. And so out of curiosity, I went to see what the famine was like. Please remember I went to a very cloistered, protected, society who only looked towards New York and Zurich and Delhi and no one ever looked back to the village. So out of curiosity I went there and I saw death, starvation, hunger for the first time and it shook me because I didn't know my own country. So I came back home, told my mother, I'd like to live and work in a village Mother went into a coma because she said, what is this? All the jobs are laid out for you and now you want to waste your time in a village. I said, uh, I want to give something back to my country. At least I want to give something back to one half of India which no one knows about <coughs> or cares about, which is India of the villages of Mahatma Gandhi. She said, what do you want to do in a village? No money, no job, no prospect, no security. What are you going to do? I said, I want to be an unskilled laborer digging wells in Rajasthan. 
she never spoke to me for many years because she felt I'd let my family down. Her biggest fear was, what will I tell the family? You have the best education and now you want to be an unskilled laborer digging wells. I said, I'd like to see if I can manage to do that. So for five years, I was exposed to the most extraordinary knowledge, skills, and wisdom that very, very poor people have. And I thought that this knowledge, skill, and wisdom must be brought into mainstream thinking. This is the knowledge, skills, and wisdom that Mahatma Gandhi talked about in India. Why is it that we have not brought this into mainstream. So I thought I'd start a college only for the poor. So I went to this village called Tilonia. Elders came to me and said, are you running from the police? I said, no. You failed in your exam. I said, no. You couldn't get a government job. I said, no. They were wondering and puzzled, what am I doing here? I go to the best school and college in India and then I want to live in village. Is there something wrong that you're not telling us? I said, no. I want to live and work in this village and start a college only for the poor. So, what did I learn in those five years? I learned there's a difference between literacy and education. I'm sure you've heard what Mark Twain said. Never let school interfere with your education. School is what you learn how to read and write. Education is what you get from your family, from your environment, and from your community. So just by this exposure for five years, we redefined professionalism. Who's a professional today? A professional is someone who has a combination of competence, confidence, and belief. To me, a water diviner is a professional. A traditional midwife is a professional because these are the people who are accepted, respected by the community who they serve. So today, this is a quotation I, I reflects the Barefoot College. The illiterate of the 21st century will not be someone who can't read and write, but those who, those who cannot learn unlearn and relearn. That is what the Barefoot College is all about. So when they said that you're talking revolutionary stuff, no one's heard of this. You're thinking outside the box, so can you prove it on the ground? So the Barefoot College was built by this gentleman who is the first barefoot architect who still can't read and write today, but he built me the college at $1.50 a square foot. Today, that college is the only college which is fully solar energized. Thank you very much. We have 200 kilowatts of panels on the roof, and for the next 25 years, I have no problem with power. And it is actually installed by a Hindu priest from a nearby ten temple who's only done primary school but he knows more about solar engineering than anyone I know anywhere in the world. 40 computers work 24 seven of solar power. I have 600 lights, batteries, everything works up solar. We're the most self-sufficient college in rural India today. We have a telephone exchange, which is optical fiber cable also working off solar. Sometimes uh, speed is faster than Delhi. People don't remember that. And now the college is also experimenting with design. This is a Buckminster Fuller geodesic dome. Someone said, if you want to make geodesic domes, you have to go through a course for five years of architecture. I went to the learnest blacksmith and I said, can you make me the dome? Easy. So he made me the dome, and we may use the dome for a variety of purposes. We use it for a community radio station. We use it for a pathology lab. 
we use it for a station where we reach 50,000 people through these women. And they're all manned by women. So this is a pathology lab. We also have a solar operated ATM. In case you should ever come to the Barefoot College, you'll have no death of money. We also have an outlet for about 500 artisans, and we sell over $150,000 every year of, art, of 500 artisans who are paid by check. So if they don't know how to read and write, the money stays in the bank, but they have to learn how to read and write. So that's how they, uh, that's the incentive to learn how to read and write. We also preserve the culture of Rajasthan. The culture of Rajasthan is important, it's dying out because of Bollywood music. We have 4,000 hours of music which is preserved. We are preserving traditional varieties of seed, which is dying also in Rajasthan. And we have a dentist, illiterate. <coughs> Grandmother, she looks after the kids, uh, teeth of 7,000 children. And in six months, if she's trained properly, she said she'll do a root canal. So what have we done? We are demystifying technology. We are decentralizing technology to the hands of very poor people so that you're not dependent on skills and knowledge from outside. So we train them into making sanitary pad units. We train them into hand looms, which is now dying out too. The hand looms of Rajasthan are famous, but they're all dying because of milk cloths. And we also believe that the technology of the people, which is 100 years old, must be preserved, must be respected. If you ask an engineer today, how do you get drinking water into the villages, he'll say, put in a hand pump. That's the only thing he knows. If you ask an old man in the village, what do you do for water? He says, collect rainwater. We collect rainwater for hundreds of years, why aren't we doing it even now today? So we collect over 400,000 liters of rainwater from the roofs of the college into that tank. That's the stage, but under that there's a 400,000 liter tank. And the stage is used for a variety of purposes, like for instance when His Holiness the Dalai Lama came to Thelonia, we use the stage for that purpose. If you should come to the Barefoot College, you'll get solar cooked food, and this is uh, a cooker made, fabricated by women who are illiterate. Regrettably, they're almost half German because they have to be so precise. Indian women are not very precise, as you know. Hundreds of years ago, they used to collect rainwater. So this technology of collecting rainwater from the roofs, we transferred into the schools. So all the schools now collect rainwater. So we collect over 100 million liters of rainwater and over 50,000 children get access to water because of rain collected underground. In 1975, we started the first schools at night because in the morning, boys and girls would have to look after cattle and sheep and goats. So we thought the only time they had was to go to school at night. That was the only time they had. So we started the night schools of Thelonia in 1975. It was all, now today they're all lit by solar lanterns fabricated in Thelonia. And we have digital schools all over the country today. 75,000 children have gone through those night schools. But the beauty is that more than 80% of them stayed back in the village. We tried to make sure that they do not encourage migration from the rural to the urban. So we trained them to be masons and all these activities which are very useful in Thelonia. And we also do some work in research and technology. So we built the first barefoot solar projector today. And that solar projector was used to show films, like for instance, the one on Malala.
cannot be the same as she was. They shot me on the left side of my head, who has prayed for my fast recovery and a new life. Here's Malala Yousafzai. She's appearing at Caesar's Palace. The movie is we named me Malala. I'm not a lone voice. I am many. They can change the world. She may not be the same as she was. They shot me on the left side of my head, who has prayed for my fast recovery and a new life. Here's Malala Yousafzai. She's appearing at Caesar's Palace. The movie is renamed me Malala. I'm not a lone voice. I am many. <coughs> they... Sorry, it got stuck. Over 7,000 children from these night nice schools between 6 and 14 practice in a democratic process to elect a prime minister. The prime minister today is 12 years old. She looks after 20 goats in the morning, but she's prime minister in the evening. She supervises, administers through a cabinet, Minister of Education, Minister of Empowerment, Minister for Water, and all the prime ministers are girls, much to the regret of the boys. The boys have to settle to be leader of the opposition or speaker of the house. Five years ago, she got the world's children's prize from the Queen of Sweden. And the Queen of Sweden was just delighted, couldn't imagine how this girl who'd never been outside a village in her life was so casually adapting herself to the country so she asked me to find out, where did she get her confidence from? So I asked her, where did she get your confidence from? The girl on the left of the queen looked at her straight in the eye and said, please tell her I'm the prime minister. Wherever there is no newspaper, wherever there's no radio, wherever there's no television, we use puppetry. This man, is a 300-year-old Muslim called Joachim Chacha. He's my psychoanalyst, he's my doctor, he's my teacher, he's my lawyer, he's my donor. He solves all my problems for me in the village. And we show about 100,000 shows and tell them about social messages, why you should not beef your wife, why you should send your child to school. These are messages which we give. And he's a legend now because the Indian Postal Service brought out a stamp on them. And of course, the Queen, the Prince of Wales, who's a great supporter of Thelonia, wanted to meet Joachim Chacha. So there you are. 2008, because we had this technology, grassroots, Gandhian technology, of bottom-up, training people, and improving the quality of life. In 2008, we had trained women from Afghanistan and Bhutan. Today, there are over 1,000 women we have trained as solar engineers. What do we do? We go to a village which is non-electrified. We say this is the criteria. Has to be a woman <coughs> who's a grandmother. Has to be a woman who's illiterate. Has to be a woman who stays in that community and not goes out woman who's never been to school and college, 
and been endorsed by the community. And then she comes for six months to the Barefoot College. Today, in Africa, because that is the light you get in Africa, we have covered the whole continent of Africa. Six months. Learning by doing, doing by learning. <laughs> 